Hello children of the universe and welcome back to my channel Makeup and Science. My name is Darky and this is where I like to play with makeup whilst I talk to you about science. And today I'm taking you back to the solar system where I will talk to you about the planet Mars. So if that sounds interesting to you, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome. I'm just putting on some eye primer. So, as many of you would know, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. Mars is named after the Roman god of war because of its reddish colour, which looks like blood. Other civilizations also named the planet for its colouring. For example, the Egyptians called it Herdesha, meaning the red one. Even today, it is often called the red planet due to its rich iron soils oxidizing into rust. So I thought it'd be very fitting to use the Geology Pilbara palette to begin with because it is set in the West Australian sort of desert area called Pilbara and it's rich iron soil, which would be very similar to Mars. So this is what it looks like on the inside and I'm going to use this sort of iron area for the base color. There's even one here called Brockman Iron, which is perfect. Mars is the second smallest planet after Mercury, with a radius of 3,390 kilometers, which makes it about half the size of Earth, with an average distance of 228 million kilometers away from the Sun which makes up 1.5 astronomical units, it takes about 13 minutes from light to travel from the sun to Mars. Mars's daily rotation takes 24.6 hours, which is very similar to Earth's 23.9 hours. Martian days are called sols, and there are 669.6 sols per orbit around the sun which is 687 Earth days, just under two years of Earth it takes Mars to get around the sun. Yeah. So due to Mars having a very similar tilt to Earth's, there's been 25 degrees and Earth's been 23.9 degrees, or 23.4 degrees, sorry. Mars has four seasons, just like Earth. But Mars is a little bit more complicated, so I have left a link down below that you can read in the uh, description box um, about Mars's tilt and how their seasons are not as even as ours. Like, when we have our four seasons, it's generally every three months. Mars, theirs aren't as equal as each other. The structure of Mars has a dense core between 1500 and 2100 kilometers in radius. The core is comprised of iron, nickel, and sulfur. Sulfur. That's an interesting one. Surrounding the core is a rocky mantle between 1240 to 1880 kilometers thick. And above that is the crust made of iron, magnesium, aluminium, calcium, and potassium. It is between 10 to 50 kilometers thick. So the surface of Mars covers about the same area as all the dry land on Earth. So if you minus all the land that's under water on Earth, we have the same land uh, mass, not land mass. Distance, area. There we go. <laughs> it's volcanoes, impact craters, crustal movement, and atmospheric conditions such as dust storms have altered the landscape of Mars over many years, creating some of the solar system's most interesting topographical features. Yes. 
a long canyon system called Vallis Marineris. Marineris? Vallis Marineris. Sorry. <laughs> a large canyon system called Vallis Marineris is long enough to stretch from California to New York. More than 48,000 kilometers long. The Martian Canyon is 320 kilometers at its widest and seven kilometers deep at its deepest. That makes it larger than the Grand Canyon. Actually, it makes it 10 times larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. Mars is also home to the largest mountain in our solar system called Olympus Mons. It is three times larger than Mount Everest. Look how gorgeous this is. I really love this palette. So this is with the Topa Shimmer and this one is without. And I am very proud of this brand. It's brand new and they just came out with the very first palette and it's based in Western Australia, my home. So I'm really happy to have my hands on this and it is fantastic color story and great, great quality as well. I love it. So there is water on Mars, but with the atmosphere being so thin, there is no liquid water on the surface of Mars. So to find water, it is in the form of ice under the surface, usually at the polar caps. And it also comes out as salty brine water and it leaks down like the hills and crater walls when it's warm enough to melt. The atmosphere on Mars is thin, made up mostly of carbon dioxide, nitrogen and argon gases. The temperature on Mars is maxed at 20 degrees Celsius and goes as low as minus 153 degrees Celsius. And because the atmosphere is so thin, say you're standing at the equator at summer, I guess, your feet can be a lovely 20 degrees Celsius. By the time you get to the head, it's at the zero degrees. So warm, freezing. The potential for life on Mars is non-existence. So when scientists are exploring the planet, they're really just looking for signs of extinct life. So that would probably be in the form of fossils and any chemical traces of, I guess, dead matter. Mars is one of the most explored bodies in the solar system and is the only planet that we have sent and landed rovers on. The first rover to successfully land on Mars was called Sojourner. Sojourner. I had to look that up. <laughs> it launched from Earth in December of 1996 and landed on Mars on July the 4th, 1997. The first rover to successfully land on Mars was called Sojourner. It launched from Earth in December of 1996 and landed on the Martian surface in July the 4th, 1997. The primary objective of Sojourner's mission was to demonstrate the ability to send low-cost landings like launches to the Martian surface. Sojourner explored the area near the lander before ending its mission on November the 4th, 1997, where NASA ended its daily communications with the rover. Since then, NASA has sent Spirit and Opportunity, which landed on Mars, in January of 2004, they found evidence of water under Mars's surface. Neither are currently operational. Curiosity landed on the Mars surface of August 2012. The mission to find more water on the surface and any other life-sustaining chemicals. Earlier this year, in February 2021, the rover Perseverance, strapped with a helicopter Ingenuity to its belly, landed. Ingenuity took its first 
light in April of 2021, which is a huge milestone. It is the first time ever that we have had something flying on a different planet or any other celestial body. And considering that Mars has a very thin atmosphere, it was a breakthrough to find that it did work in, you know, different settings compared to Earth's atmosphere. Because, you know, aerodynamics are all different and stuff. Breaking news, perseverance on Mars. So September 11th this year, so 2021, Perseverance has collected its first rock sample. Those rock samples are going to be jetted off back to Earth and it'll be the first time we get to have it in our hands and get to study it properly. This is very exciting news. You can follow all updates from Perseverance rover and all the other rovers and landings on Mars through Twitter. And I've left that link down in the description box below. So these robotic explorers are the currently the only operating mobile machinery on the Martian land. But there is a stationary machine called InSight. InSight landed on the red planet on November the 26th of 2018. InSight is short for Interior Exploration of Seismic Investigations, uh, GODC and Heat Transport. It is designed to study Mars's interior structure and find, you know, key evidence for how the inner solar system planets formed long ago. InSight also measures tectonic activity and meteorite impacts today, with 733 quakes felt to this day. A new theory is forming around Mars. It may be cold, dry and dead on the outside, but it may be warm and gooey on the inside, which is, you know, creating the tectonic activity. The moons of Mars, which it has two, are thought of to be asteroids that were caught in its gravitational pull and now stuck orbiting the planet. Because the asteroids are too light in weight, they don't have the gravity, the gravity of their own to become spherical over time. Their names are Phobos and the Amos. They are the horses that pulled the chariot of the god of war from the Greek mythology, Ares. Phobos is the innermost of the two moons. It is heavily cratered and slowly moving towards Mars. They predict that in 50 million years, the moon will either crash into the planet or it will be torn apart. Either way, it's most likely going to create like a set of rings around the planet. The Amos is two and a half times further away than Phobos and like just thinking about it, it's most likely either, it's most likely going to move and like leave the planet. But I might be wrong. I mean, I'm just theorizing there. So I'm adding like blue to the look to like represent the water present on the planet. So that's it from me today, children. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Sorry I've been gone for so long and it took me so long to get to the Mars video, but life isn't so hectic anymore. I am planning to do like a chatty get ready with me so I can talk about what's been happening. Um, I hope you like the look I created. It's very just, you know, Mars um, influenced, inspired, I should say. So I'll leave all the makeup look uh, makeup used in the description box below as per usual and you'll also find all my science links there as well so if you have any questions or would like to chat about anything please comment down below like this video and consider consider subscribing uh, so i hope you all have a wonderful day week month and year and i'll see you next time on makeup and science bye oh my gosh i totally forgot to input 
this symbol for Mars. See, this is how long it's been since I've done one of these videos. So, as we all know, the symbol for Mars is the male sex symbol. So a circle with an arrow pointing away. Um, no, I'm just going to like superimpose the symbol on my forehead because lazy. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs>